How's it going everybody? I'm Driftwood. We're going to do a different video today. This is going to be an uh, uh, episode until it's completed. What I'm basically going to be doing is creating a new starter project for everyone to use as like a default project. So instead of going file new project and you start your game from scratch, I'm going to build a database. I'm going to build custom animations. I'm going to import some action sequencing that I've made. Uh, I'm going to possibly get a good tile set, an extra tile set you can use, um, and maybe a few uh, maps that I make for you. So I'm going to make this sample project, which I'm going to distribute for everybody to use, so that um, when you guys make your new games and you start a new game, especially when the next game jam comes around many months from now, um, we can use this project, which I'll keep updating. Um, but I'm going to get started on it right now, and I thought it would be a good idea just to to make a video on it, why not just catalog the whole process? So let's get started. We're going to start a new project, Drifty Starter Project. And basically, I'm just tired of seeing Spark and Fire and Heal and the default crap. And I understand it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort to make these, to make these, you know, animations. And uh, I don't like roasting people's games. As you guys may think that it's funny I know a lot of you like it but I I don't I don't want to roast games and be negative that's why I try to make at least even when it's a bad game I try to make half the video or a lot of the video very positive and give constructive feedback so that it, it you know I don't I'm not trying to deter anyone from making games I want to encourage people to make games so I thought if I give people a project to start with I won't have to see these default animations if they use my project for their big for their game and it all the stuff I give you you can use or not use but um, if if I give you some custom stuff I'll see some some more interesting things right so I'm gonna just go through the process of making a starter project that I can distribute to you guys so when you create your projects you can start with this one and, and really just uh, add on to it from there I'm gonna make uh, probably use the character generator and make make like 10 actors uh, I'm going to have probably like, I don't know, eight classes or so, maybe a hundred skills. I don't know if that's too many, probably like 10 skills per class. So like between 50 to a hundred skills, um, all with their own animations, all with their own, uh, at least one action sequence for each class and a, a lot of items, customized items. I'm going to try to keep it organized as organized as possible. So when you guys jump into the sample project, you know uh, the starter project you can clearly find what you're looking for and and everything will be laid out so that you can quickly make an RPG way way faster than just creating a new project and then therefore you can send me projects faster and better projects more importantly so I think it'll be a win-win for everybody involved um, it, it's just gonna take a lot of work building the database from scratch but that's what we're gonna do um, all of these animations they're going to be changed. I'm just going to switch them all up a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm kind of debating if I should leave these and and actually just add on to it, but I know that all of these are heavily overused. So why not just take these and switch them all up, change them up a little bit, and then make, maybe make some extra ones to like 30 more extra ones. And then when I make the skills, you know, we can use different animations for those skills and whatnot. Um, so let's get started. Um, what should we start with? Probably clearing everything out. So we're going to clear out all these actors. We're going to change the maximum to, let's say, 10, 10 actors. We're going to clear out all of these classes. Yep, they got to go. We're going to change the maximum to, let's say, 8 classes. Seems to be fair. Um, skills. We're going to keep attack. We're going to keep guard. Dual attack, double attack. We're going to keep these basic things except for heal, fire, and spark. Those got to go. We're going to change the maximum, and let's just start off with, say, 80. That's that's a, a big number there. We're going to kill all of these items. We're going to change the maximum. We'll just say 50 items for now. We're going to kill all of these weapons. And we're going to change this to, I don't, we probably don't need 50 weapons. Uh, maybe, like, let's see, 8 classes, and probably, like, so let's see, you would say 8, eight weapons, and then they have, like, 5 tiers, 35. Uh, we'll do five tiers of weapons just to start you off and you can add on to that so five times eight that's 40 right so we'll have 40 weapons now we'll probably need more armors 
Uh, I want to keep it simplified. We're going to delete these. We're going to change the maximum on the armors to probably, what did I do, 40 on the other one? We'll do 80. 80 armors. Uh, enemies, we're going to delete all these enemies. Um, I'm kind of debating whether I should throw plugins into this sample project or not. Maybe a few. If I put plugins in, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a few. Very, very limited number. So um, we'll probably start off with a small amount of enemies for now. We'll do 20. Uh, troops, of course, we don't need uh, this if we don't have that. So we'll change this to like 30 because you're going to have multiple reused enemy enemies in the troops. Uh, states, we're going to keep those states, we're going to add a lot. Uh, in order to speed this whole process up and get this to you quicker, I'm going to reuse resources that I've already made in other games. I think it would be a good idea to do that. Um, I ultimately want to have a new tile set for you guys to use, because I know a lot of you are sick of this default. Uh, these default tile sets. They're great tile sets, but they're overused, right? Uh, same with the music. Um, I'm going to add some custom music. I'm going to make a sample project that's going to just constantly be added to it. And I might do these videos weekly where you see the new stuff that gets added. This is going to be probably the longest one because it's the whole beginning of it. Um, might uh, do button uh, button common events. We're going to change all these sound effects. We're actually going to remove some things. Uh, for now, we're going to get rid of all of this stuff. And we will specify which ones we want as we add them. We're going to clear out all of this stuff. Wait, actually the boat ones and the ship ones, I sort of like those. We'll leave those. Cursor, um, we'll go into more specific uh, sound effects later on. We want to do some basic database, maybe do a world map. Somebody said that they wish there was a world map generator. World maps are easy to do. Um, matter of fact, I do want to start the project with some sample maps, but not like, you know, load map, none of these. We're, we're going to create something similar to this. But we're going to make it, uh, I'm going to make it myself for you. So maybe we'll do that so we have some background to look at. We'll start a, a new map. We're going to keep this, this map actually. Uh, edit this map. And this is going to be map 1. Uh, or we'll just call this system. Because we're never going to touch this map. This is going to be a system map that just is a placeholder. We're going to create a new map. <clears throat> How big should it be? Probably not too big. Let's do 90 to 90. We're going to call this world or overworld display name overworld is that one word I don't know doesn't matter overworld okay we'll leave it like that uh, encounter steps we're gonna set that to 70 we're gonna pick the musics later on um, of course it's gonna be changed to your liking but for now let's start off with the 90 by 90 Let's zoom out quite a bit. Let's uh, start this off with uh, how to make a world map. Um, probably going to make it a little wider just to fit the screen a little bit better. So we'll say like one, 120 maybe. That's probably that's probably good. We'll, we'll do 120 by 80. And then we can zoom in one more or two more. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the map by filling the whole thing in with water. Then what we're going to do is use the circle tool, a little tool, and we're going to draw the outlines of where we want our continents to be. Cool, I kind of like that. And we'll do another continent down here. Probably need a little more space. I'm going to right click and get that one. This will be a smaller continent. We'll have one big continent and then a, a smaller continent. Just about like that. And possibly even uh, a small island over here. A nice little island with a mostly circular shape. Cool. So now what we're going to do is take some kind of ground. Probably for this island, we're going to go with this one. Go like that. And we'll do some fine touching up later on, like making so that you can kind of 
get around the whole thing with the light water. And let's start with some deep green con uh, areas like this. Now there's a lot of uh, mapping videos out there, so this is going to be something very simple for you to use as a world map. If you want a different map besides the one that's sort of built in as the sample maps that people have already recognized heavily. We're going to do a mountain ridge pretty soon after this. We can get rid of that one, that one. Cool, that'll work. We're going to use the lighter color for this one. It might even be a good idea to do some sort of snowy area. That'll work. And we can just kind of clean up a little bit right there. That looks fine. And we'll do like, let's see, because it's gonna, we're going to make it uh, actually loop horizontally and loop vertically. Not the parallax, though. Uh, right here. Loop both. So if we go across here, we're going to end up on this side. If we go up here, we're going to end up on this side. So this will be kind of close to that. So maybe the ice place will be right here. And then we'll do like a barren place. So what I'm going to do is right click and hold and take this whole island kind of put it right here neat right we can c cover that up now I'm gonna take some snowy area we're gonna put this snowy area like this I actually forgot to do the light water so we'll do the light water first then we'll take the snowy area you can see quickly we're already building a terrain we're already getting sort of a terrain so as we go up and to the right, we're going to get to this one because it's going to loop. So this could be like the north. Even though it's in the bottom left, it could still be like the north frozen area. And it's surrounded by a lot of water, so it would be sort of like you're getting back to the, the middle of the hemisphere or whatever as you get to this area. Cool. Let's take some basic mountains. Might want to zoom in a little bit for this. And I'm going to do like a mountain range that sort of separates the main continents a little bit. And we're going to keep it like it was a tectonic plate type thing. That's kind of push these mountains up. And we're going to keep it sort of something like that. And this is a rough, uh, a rough estimation of where I want the mountain ridge to be. And we might even do a little bit uh, another mountain range or some, some mountains over here as well. Now I don't exactly want the the mountains to be inside the water, so we're going to get rid of all the mountains that are inside the water tiles. Cool. And that one. I think that look. Oh, and this one too. Boom. So that looks okay. Now what we're going to do is detail a little bit on the mountains by adding um, the next size of mountains. And this one can get tricky. Uh, before I do this one, I sort of want to make these a little bit thicker. Fully separated a little bit. More defined mountain range. That'll give us a way to enter up right there. And possibly like... Like this. Because, you know, we can't like enter from the south very well. It, you know, unless we do something like that. And that's kind of easy to miss. So we're going to have all of our mountain ranges sort of look like that so we can enter up like that. I think some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Like we'll be able to put something here and something here. We'll be able to get across by making a mountain zone so that you can travel, travel between these mountain ranges. This one you'll just have to use as a barrier and maybe a castle will be, you know, logistically castles are placed in uh, 
uh, in good areas that can defend them. So uh, people would probably see that this is a good zone. It's next to water. It's got a mountain ridge to protect it. Someone would probably build a castle right here. So we're going to start with a castle right there. We're going to say this green castle decided, hey, right next to the mountain range and next to the water, we want our castle to be right there. Because it would be fortified a little bit from the mountains. I sort of want to go like this. One tile though. Boom. I think that looks better. Maybe even like that. We're not, we're not going to get too hung up on the details of it though. Just clean it up as we need to. Cool. That'll work fine. We're not going to overpopulate the map. But we're going to throw some things down. Like I like this little snow tower. The idea of this snow tower would be cool. We'll put that right there. We're also going to put some snow trees. Some forest area. That looks fine. And maybe a cloud. Oh no. That'll be on a different layer. We'll, we can do that with an event. I mean, we can put a cloud, but... We could do a little bit of frosty mountains. We could even make it so that this area is only accessible when you have the airship by completely blocking the tower in with mountains. So you can't get to this tower area until you have the airship and you can land right next to it. So we'll go ahead and do that. That seems to make sense. So even if you have like the regular ship, you can sail to it and see that it's there. But you can't actually get to the tower area until you have the airship. This is a way to kind of like uh, make sure you do one thing before you get to the next thing. So this is completely blocked off until you can land an airship in here. Now you may, before uh, <clears throat> before you can get access to cross the mountain, you may need to use a, a regular boat and sail around the mountains to another village. Now a village location would probably be good right here because we've got sort of like a little uh, water area and towns usually build around a source of water. So let's make a little town right around there. Let's go ahead and go with this. Boom. That seems like a place that a town would be built. So we're going to go ahead and put a town there. Uh, another town, more of a, a farming town, will go right there. So we'll probably put a little bit of a forest right here. So let's go ahead and get some forest, some trees. And we'll make this like a foresty zone, foresty area. This is not going to be the best map. It's going to be a map that works that you can use as a sample project. We could even use some of the different trees up here if we want to. Like closer to the ice area, right? Pine trees. Neat. Okay, let's do a little path right here. A little path right there. That'll work fine. We could do something similar over here, but I think we'll start the, the party down here. And then they'll have to eventually get something over here in a small area and then a boat. Of course, you're going to make your own story, so you could decide how you do that. And then you get the boat to sail across here and then do something over here. Here's where you would build a port. And then you can get a ship to sail uh, over to this other place um, or this town or it's optional. You know, Maybe the, the you start off in a linear motion and then it gets like to an optional thing. You could sail to this place to do something here. You can go to this castle. You can go here. You can go here. Uh, and then eventually one of these will give you um, the airship, one of these paths. Or maybe you have to do all four of the zones and you could do them in any order to get the airship to go here to do the ending of the game. Or however you want to put it, right? So let's do a little mountain area. I think I like the idea of a mountain being right here. We could actually raise that up one and put it just like that. Now it doesn't look that great from zoomed out, but if we zoom in, I bet that'll look pretty neat. Let's go ahead and take this. Let's make it an active volcano. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so now what I was saying about doing the other mountains, we want to start at the top and work our way down. Because the, the way it, it'll layer, 
it, it might look funny if you if you don't start at the top and work your way down so we're gonna layer the mountains like that and work our way down I don't want that though we'll go like this sort of like this So that one, we're going to have to add a little bit of mountains right there, just so that it looks better. And we'll take this again, going to detail this map a little bit. Now, like I said, I want to add another tile set, but that doesn't mean we can't use this tile set and another one in tandem. And already these mountains are looking much cooler with two different kinds of mountains being used. See, it looks a little more natural because we're using, like, what looks better, this or this? Uh, definitely this one, right? I think so, anyway. When you have a big set of trees like that, or, I mean of mountains, you could actually use this one to give it a little more of a, uh, a different look for, like, the, the thicker areas. So we'll do that. Let's see though. Um, it it might not look exactly right. Let's zoom in. It doesn't look right. Let's undo that. This is sort of for like edges of it. I'll go with the same pattern that I've used before. And I like the way that looks. So once again we'll start at the top and work our way down. Do one of those, and then we'll go underneath it, and we'll just go like that, and then right here. That looks fine. Uh, after you get so many in, a, in the same pattern, you might want to switch it up so that it doesn't look too samey. Cool. It's starting to look good. It's okay to not put them in every area. We can leave this area like that and have like a little bit offsetting right there. So now our mountain range looks a little bit different and I kind of like how that looks. So let's do the same thing over here. Almost done with this segment. I think this will work fine. We'll throw some grass in this area too. Kind of want to back step on that one. And go like this. And go like this. And then go like this. Oop, like that. Maybe one right there. Cool. I like that. That looks really good. So let's do some grass on this uh, area right here. We're going to use the lighter grass. And we'll do the circle tool to make it look a little bit as natural as we can. We could actually put some trees on this side. Let's do that. We'll put a couple of dead trees. Why not? Following this side. Maybe this part of the map has got some sort of corruption or something. Not a hole in the map. I don't think that'll look good. We'll do some smaller heels. You could also go around and block off certain areas with these sort of rocks that look good in the water. If you don't want the ship to be able to sail, you know, the regular boat to be able to sail through them like that. So they kind of get cut off. You can use this as a, 
uh, uh, what do you call it, like a block that's in the way of the story. We'll put a whirlpool somewhere. Got to put a whirlpool somewhere in the game, right here in the center. Boom, one single whirlpool. That'll that'll work. You could do something with that, make a new map for that. Transfer if you have the ship. We'll do some of these trees over here. Jungle trees. We could even do a little pond if we want to. Let's do that. Something like this. Boom. Also want to change this water to something like this. Maybe, maybe like that looks better. And then this one as well to this this kind of water pool. And we'll get rid of one of these, one of those. That looks fine, just like that. Okay. And we don't really need to go too crazy. Um, like I said, it's a sample map. You're going to change this up to work for your game. So we'll do something like a, a ruined tower here. And we'll do uh, some grass. We'll do some of the greener hills over here. Let's do some of this grass as well. Well, it kind of doesn't fit, does it? So we'll go ahead and stick with the same lighter color grass. And we want to use this one, huh? No, no. What am I looking for? Like, probably some forest area around this little tower. You could start the player in this tower. He awakens. And, he, you know, for some reason... You find uh, something that'll, and then it takes you to like a town up here where th these guys are like builders or something, and they'll build a ship, but you have to take the ship all the way around. You know what I mean? We're, re we're using the most of the maps. So we're blocking this off, but you have to go here to get the boat. You get the regular boat, and then you can sail this boat all the way over to this side, and then we'll put something right here for the player to, on this side, to get the, the ship. Um, something like a bigger, a bigger castle, a bigger town. Boom. It would make sense to have that right there. So you get the boat from here. You start here, get the boat from here, work your way around to this castle. Maybe do something here if you want. Um, but in this, your storyline, you get the ship. The ship will let you sail. And then you can sail to either here, do this set. There's a storyline thing here. There's a storyline thing here storyline thing here and a storyline thing here and then once you've done all four of these storyline things you have to meet up probably back at the castle and and then um from the castle you'll get the airship to go here and beat the guy beat the last boss it makes sense to me um there's a lot of, of room for improvement on this simple world map um especially up here we could actually draw some grass before we finish it so let's just do like some simple grass hello what's going on oh that's already grass let's do this And we'll continue to do a little bit of grass patching. It's like I said, it's just a sample map. You're going to change this completely to work for how you want it to do. When you're actually a forest would look really good right here. This would be a perfect spot for a forest, like a big deeper forest, big room. You could put like some sort of forest maze thing in here, and then a couple of straggler trees that kind of grow out towards there. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then as we get up to here, we could do some of these hillier mountains. Why not? It looks okay. You could even use plugins to make it so that you get different encounters depending on the type of, of terrain you're walking on. And then you could do some hills maybe on this side. This could be a healy area. Actually, I think over here is perfect spot for another possible thing like maybe some tower you have to climb 
change it up to however you want there could be some hermit who li who lives up here or actually the hermit could live on this on this little area this little spot can have a little villa you could do a snow house over here if you wanted to and really just use it as a, as a template and this is just a template for you to use and you can add and remove as much stuff as you want we could have like an old messed up you know castle that used to be here it was ransacked and the forest overtook it and then they had to rebuild it over here it's up to your interpretation of what you want to do with this this map right here but we'll zoom out and that's going to be our simple world map for now it's lots of room for improvement but hey it's a it's a sample map for you i'll add to it if i feel like it needs some more stuff but that'll get you a big enough space to to use as the world map for you to tie together you've got room for one two three four Four villages, a small little hut here, a small little hut here, a ruined castle, an actual castle, uh, and the final boss tower, and maybe like the starting zone tower, and, and a little whirlpool area. There's there's lots of ideas, and another tower right there, so whatever you want to do to this. So you could even build like, this is a nice big area, you can even have like some sort of coliseum area right here, where there's like challengers, and, and uh, like you go here and you can fight other people and then these guys make money so they can they can afford to pay somebody to do a watch out for the coast to see if there's anything happening at this tower I mean you could so many things could could be made with this little sample map so cool we've got a simple ma uh, map that's gonna give us a little bit of background things to look at while we're editing and stuff okay let's let's jump back into the database um, we're gonna use the character generator and we're gonna generate some some random uh, some random heroes for the basics so we're gonna randomize until we see something that looks good and then maybe we might change a few things I kinda of like this guy but I do want to get rid of the wings so this guy looks cool we'll go ahead and give him a face image what does he look like Does he look like a Rick Does he look like a Bob Does he look like a, a John what does he look like so we're gonna export this and we're gonna go uh, we could go with different faces, but we're going to keep it simple. One face will do for now. Inside our, our image uh, faces, we're going to call this Hero. Jo oh, I know what we can do. We're probably going to want to use this when we get into the database anyway. So what I'm going to do here is bring up, uh, one second, I'm going to bring up this uh, red, uh, generator thingy. As soon as I find the link to it. Uh, RPG maker generator stuff yeah so right now it's the bookmark to making staff names but well, I'll just bring this over here for now hey no no I want you right there thank you very much mm, let's bring up where is our RPG maker project hello where's our project how come our project not showing whatever here it is is it cuz this is open anyway let's find a name generator what a mess. What a mess. Okay, name generator. We're going to go to fantasy and we're going to go barbarian names, bandit names, demon names. You're going to want to use something like this when you're building a database. It'll really help. Evil names. Hmm. Hmm. Ghoul names, giant names, null names, goblin names, gorgon, killer names, kitsune names, night name, night names. Let's go with night names. Barrent the Hungry, Ronald the Stranger, Renfry, Bar Bartolot, Carl, Carl. This guy's gonna be Carl. So we're gonna see, we're gonna spell it C A R L E. So let's go ahead and export this image and call this one Carl Base. Save that. Cool. Now we're gonna go to Walk. We're gonna export this and we're gonna say Carl Walk. Now we're going to take the the damage character. We're going to import Carl Walk. Okay. And we're going to take the damage and put that one right underneath it. And then we're going to export this as Carl Walk and we are going to overwrite it. Yes. Um, so we'll overwrite that. And now we're going to take the battle and we're going to export this to Carl Battler. Very simple. 
And just in case we want to edit it later, we're also going to save this JSON file. So we're going to save that as Carl. Cool, right? So that's our first one. We can go into here, take this face image. We'll take Carl's face. We're going to take Carl's walker. Carl's battler. Feel free to change these up and add your own. But like I said, it's going to be a sample project. It's going to look a little bit different than just creating a new project. So we're going to call this one Carl. All right, so now Carl, he's going to start at level one. We need to give him a class. So let's go to the classes. We're going to make a starting class here. What should our class be? I kind of like the idea I was doing Final Fantasy XI, but I want to make my own customized classes for this project and a lot simpler. A very, 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 simple, very, very much, much more simple classes. So let's start him off with saying he could use magic. Um, well, let's go into our types and change this up. Let's not use magic. Let's not use special. Let's change up our first thing. Magic is pretty universal, isn't it? We're going to call it... Um, hmm. Oh, the generator. The name creator. So useful. So useful. It has something for that as well. So what we can do is go to RPG Maker... And, yeah, I know I have lots of messy stuff there. But anyway, we're going to have a second tab open. Let's try that again. Second tab open, RPG Maker. And because we're going to come back to this one to create more. So this is going to be for um, skill types. So we go to Other. Trust me, going here is going to save you a lot of time. It will just give you ideas. Energy types. We'll just try that one. Vigor, Endurance, Adrenaline, Immunity, Mastery, Spirit, Energy. We could call it Spirit. We could call the skill type Spirit. There's also actually one for, for Magic Types. Let's go to Magic Types. Check this out. I've been here before. Energy Ritual, Plague Bending, Spirit Magic, Chi Bending, Unholy Body Magic, Lava Sorcery, Air Bending, Ocean Sorcery, Animalistic. We can get more. Draining Sorcery, Chain Ritual, Ice Magic, Restriction Sorcery. Uh, destruction magic. Sorry for ads. I'm just, just it's okay. Um, destruction magic. Mind bending. Light sorcery. I kind of like sorcery. Let's use sorcery. Yeah, let's use sorcery. So magic is going to be sorcery. Sorcery, and then um, for special, we're going to call it technique or tech. Should it be technique or tech? We'll just call it uh, tech. So sorcery and tech. I think that's fine. Also, let's see. We could get rid of some equipment types. Weapon, shield, head, body, accessory. Uh, I, I'm always tempted to add more, and I think that's a bad idea to do. So we're going to keep it like that because some people may be used to that five things. So we'll keep it like that. It's not bad, those five. Same thing with the armor types is fine. And the weapon types, we can add more, but it's probably a better idea if we keep it simple because we're only going to have basically eight of them. Dagger sword, probably use axe and a cane and, a, and maybe a bow and a claw. So we've got 12 here. We're not going to use four of them. We're going to use, we're going to make eight classes and each class is going to get its own specific weapon type focus. So we're going to use eight of these 12, leaving you to interpret the other four how you want. Element types, you don't need a ton of element types, but you may, I will probably add one more element type eventually. But one of the biggest things that uh, I see in games that bothers me is the icon set. So that's a big problem to have right from the get-go. So to change up this database, we're going to use uh, as many resources as we can to make this icon set really awesome. So we're going to go to yanfly.mo. We're going to go to his freebies. Resources, yanfly freebies. We are going to take his um, really, really awesome icon set. No, no, it's up here. MV ready ace icons. Here it is. We'll click on this. And this is the one we want. This big ass one right here. So these are the previous versions that are all separated. If you don't want everything, we're going to take this big one because um, it's good to have a lot of icons. So we're going to right click that save image as. Now we're going to save this as icon set. And we're going to overwrite. So we're actually going to go to where we have our thingamabobber, go to RPG Maker, we're going to go to MV 
going to go to Drifty Starter, IMG System. That's where it goes. And we're going to save it there. It's going to say, do you want to overwrite the one you have? Yes, we do. Okay, so then we're going to hit OK. We're going to save the game. We're going to close the game. And we're going to open the same project right there in Drifty Starter. Now, if we did this right, we should see that our icon set has been replaced. Now we have a really awesome icon set. And how hard was that? It wasn't hard at all. It was super easy to get way cooler icons. So because we deleted all the items and we adjusted our icon set at the beginning of the project, we don't have to go back into all of our items, all of our weapons, all of our skills and change the icons that they were using. We may have to change a couple, but not really. Just for the skills that we kept and that was it. So Carl, we're going to give him a class now. So we've got um, Carl, we're going to say he's like a spellblade, kind of like Mystic Knight. He's going to probably get abilities to enchant his weapons and buff himself and do melee and do melee damage. So he's he's going to have sorcery and he's going to have tech. He's going to be like the, the primary hero class. So we're going to copy this, paste this, sorcery and tech. And we're going to give him skills. Um, on this class, let's see, we're going to give him like, sort of like the Mystic, uh, the Mystic Knight. He's going to use the sword, uh, sorcery, tech, sword, general armor, and probably give him some basic regeneration. So he's going to get 2% HP regeneration per turn, and he's going to get 1% MP regeneration per turn. Just a very small amount so that he can continue to, he's not going to be completely tapped out. We can give him skills to increase that stuff too, but we're going to give him some sort of survivability. Um, target rate, we're going to up his hit rate a little bit because he's going to be focused on melee, so he gets 1% more hit rate. Critical rate, I like getting a 20 on a D20, which is a 5% chance as a critical, so we're going to up his hit rate 1%, his critical rate 1%. So there we go, we've got sword, uh, sorcery, tech, sword, and general armor. Um, since he's a mystic, he's sort of like a mystic knight, but but not. I don't want him to use a shield. I kind of want him to be, since he has the ability to use uh, magic, um, we're actually going to make it so that he can't use a shield. So we're going to go to equip, and we're going to go to seal equip shield. So now he cannot use a shield, but he can use a sword. He doesn't use two swords. He only uses one sword, but he has his magic to enchant himself and buff himself. So that's what we're going to do. We have to think of a name for this class. Is it like Mystic Knight? I don't want I don't really want to call it Mystic Knight. So, we'll go back to here and go to our names to help us come up with the name, martial art names, um, treaty names. Let's go ahead and bring this out a little bit. Other names, superpowers, um, spell names, we could do that pretty soon too. We're probably going to want to check that out. But for right now, you can close that. Sort of want to find something to help you find a name of the, the type. Like, let's see. Like the class, you know, the class name. Food names, nope. This is going to be a long process that it takes a while to get everything that you want. Knight names. Let's just go into knight names. Uh, and we'll see some of the extensions that they're using. Amazing Patriot Shadow Champion. Could call him Champion. Could call him... Definitely don't want to call him Cute. Uh, the Lionheart class. I like that. Tracker. Tenacious Knight. Maneater. Dragonheart. We can call him Dragonheart. That's a good one. Um, there's actually a better generator for this. Um, there is. I've seen it before. Fantasy name generators, or it could be in other generators. It's it's literally like um, um, what we're looking for. It's it's literally like names of classes. Evil names. Death names, giant names, non-magic user names. Well, he's a magic user. Ninja and assassin names. We could make him sort of ninja assassin-y. 
Um, but with magic, let's just see what comes up. Let's just see what comes up. Never know. Uh, Jay Drake, Winged Lightning Stain, Red Slinger, Silverbeat Hollow Flash. These are literally like names of the, the character itself or, or nicknames for them. We can actually go for that. We're going to use... Uh, we're going to use Lightning Tooth as the nickname for our class or our actor. So Carl is going to be nicknamed Lightning Tooth. And we're, I'm just going to make one up because I can't seem to find one. I'm going to call him, uh, um, I want to say Manser, but that's so overused. Let's just call him um, Joltist. But then he sort of sounds like he only uses... Uh, Uh, elemental slasher placeholder okay I'm gonna rename these probably off camera because it's just seriously taking too long uh, elemental elemental uh, slasher we're going to I'm gonna completely change that and in the next video you'll see different names for these um, so for right now he's going to be like the mystic knight basically uh, I guess since I'm gonna change it he's he's a mystic knight <laughs> damn it drifty um, okay so we're not going to use, well, you know what, because I don't, like I said, I wanted to use a plugins. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to use these curves because I want to go with small numbers to start the project off, but not everyone's going to know how to set everything up. I, I, I'd probably be best to use these parameter curves just to keep it simple, huh? Son of a gun. I have to do that because I don't want to include a lot of plugins in this sample project. I don't want to force you into using the plugins in order to make the project work. I want you to I want it to be kind of free. I'll probably start with one or two plugins in there, like uh Yanfly's core engine, you know, and that's probably it, or the battle engine core. I bet I'll probably have five before I release it, five or ten. Uh hopefully not that many though. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to use the parameter curves. Um just I guess. And okay, so what we're going to do is sort of figure out a balance for his parameters for this class. What would be a good balance for the parameters here? Uh, let's see. He's going to have to do physical attacks, right? So his strength is going to be in probably his melee attacking. So let's see. For HP, he's going to have a B rank of HP. For MP, he's also going to have a B rank of MP because he needs MP. But he's more of a melee, so we're going to give him a C rank of MP. He's going to need a B rank of attack, but he's going to have a C rank of defense. His magic attack is going to be D, because, uh, but his magic defense is going to be C. His agility is going to be C, and his luck is going to be C. So we actually didn't give him any A rank, did we? We gave him B HP, B MP, B attack, and that was it. We gave him, what was it, D? Yeah, a D ranking. Um, so I'll make a note tag here. Um, Rank B, HP, rank B, MP, rank B, attack, rank C, defense, rank C, magic attack, rank C, magic defense, rank, this is just so, you know, rank C, agility, AGI, because I have to assume that people are going to get this project and not really know uh, what the defaults are set, and if they change it, they can always look back here and see where the defaults are for this class, and this can be completely changed to your liking. But I do want to balance it so when you get it, the knights, are, the all the classes are pretty much equally as strong and important. Uh, that way, you can use them. Uh, you can switch between them however you want. You can add the plugins you want. So we've got our Mystic Knight uh, base class with uh, average average stats. You know, I, I could have given him a couple of D ranks and an A rank, but I think mostly straight down the line as a Mystic Knight, it's it's going to be good. Um, he'll be able to get some moves that um, probably restore HP when he attacks. Um, you know, he's going to enchant his weapons. So let's give a note. Can we actually... Let's make another note. 
So Mystic Knight will deal melee damage, but enchant his attacks with magic sorcery. Just a brief description. Okay, that's fine. Now we need to make some skills for him. Let's make some skills for him. Okay, so probably going to categorize them all the skills. So I'm going to jump down to 10 and we're going to categorize Mystic Knight. And as I change the names, I'll go through the cat the database and change them all. Um, we're going we could give an icon for the Mystic Knight. We have a ton of icons to choose from. Let's say the Mystic Knight gets um, probably this one because he's going to enchant his weapons so we're gonna say like which one looks kind of like this one or this one looks neat we'll go with that so the mystic knight and we're gonna give it sort of like bam 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 or we could even go like I like doing this sometimes to say mystic knight skills are below and so this is a placeholder so every time we come to a new set of skills, uh, we can just say, okay, this is the, this, you know, whatever next class, and then below that. So this separates the skills evenly, and it's, it's easy to see who's, what skills go to what. So let's give him his first sorcery skill. Let's go down here. What, what kind of skill should it be? Let's go with a, a skill called Ignite or something. Ignite. This is going to cause his weapon to deal um, fire damage and probably increase his attack power. Something simple, we might change it. I'm sure it will be changed. We'll make it cost MP because he's going to, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to import, um, I need to import all of the action sequencing or some of the action sequencing from my other project so that right from the get-go at level one, your Mystic Knight has a move that can use its full TP or half its TP to do a stronger attack. So that's not a bad idea. Let's do that. Um, I think if I were to go to this one and double click on Dungeons of Driftwood game.rpg project, this will load up a second browser or a second MV. I could copy paste the action sequencing and move it around the database. So let's go ahead and go like that. Like I, you guys like my new tile set? <laughs> it's awesome, right? Um, okay, so let's go to the database Dungeon Driftwood. We'll go to my skills. We're going to jump down to some of the action sequencing that I've made. Um, well, it'll be completely changed, but it'll be the same sequence. The, the, the formula and the animations will be different, though. So, where do I have them for the basic skills? I think they're in here somewhere. Here we go. So, for this guy, we'll probably give him some uh, action sequence that's similar to... To this one to branding slash so I'm gonna copy this because we've got the action sequence right here uh, very simple one very very simple one we'll copy that you can see how we're doing this go into this project and we're gonna paste that right here I'm actually gonna cut copy this one paste this one down here copy this one paste this one right here copy this one paste this one right here because I wanted that right there we can clear that cool so now branding slash which is using a different icon and a different formula we're gonna delete that we're going to delete that. It's going to be considered a normal attack, so we'll add state normal attack because it's going to base, be based on its TP. Um, we'll give it its variance. It can critical. Um, but basically, we're going to get rid of the fact that it has to require a sword, that it does slashing damage. It doesn't get any bonus because this is for a different game. So we'll get rid of all this other stuff that's related to the other game. We're just going to take the action sequence from it and probably get rid of the multiple elements because we're not using elemental core in this sample project. Yet, uh, maybe, because it's one of my favorite plugins, might throw that one in there. Probably going to keep it very light on the number of plugins. I want to do that. Um, so, I'm going to check to see if we have any common events that we're calling, just in case. No, are we calling any animations that we don't have yet? No, because we're doing action animations. So, whatever we put right here is going to call that one perfect. So, that should show for a very simple uh, action sequence right there. Save me some time. So, now what we're going to do is take probably this this one and it's going to be based on a tech and it's going to require max TP when you max out your TP you can use this tech and it's basically going to um, 
spend all your TP, because I'm not going to use the enhanced TP core, most likely, in this project. You can add it, you know, but just by default, I want to have as few plugins as possible. Spend all your TP to deal um, uh, heavy damage. And I'm going to keep it kind of vague. So we'll give it an animation real quick. We're going to say uses. Uh, it's going to be a physical attack, actually, instead of a certain hit. HP damage, normal attack. You could associate it with an element if you want to, but what we're going to do is keep it A dot ATK times, let's see, if you, your normal attack is going to do times 4, because that's how I'm going to make it, and instead of using armor scaling, I'm going to use the, de the deduction, um, so it'll be with a minus, just to keep it simple, and you can add scaling if you want to, once again, few plugins as possible, so it, basic attack is going to be this, your attack times 4 minus a defense times 2 and that's going to generate probably 10 TP so it's going to take a while you'll get hit maybe like 8 turns to use that so you want this to be pretty strong now that I'm thinking about it so because this is based on the mystic knights who who uses magic and attack it's not only going to do attack so it's going to do a dot ATK times 12 which is strong plus a dot MAT times 8 so that's super strong but we're going to subtract some stuff from that. B dot DEF times 2 minus B dot uh, MDF, magic defense, times 2. So it's it does 20 times your attack, you know, or your basically 20 times your stats, whatever the stats are that it's looking for, but minus 4. So it's, a, it's plus 16, but it's going to cost all of your TP to do. So it's going to be something we might have to come back to balance, but I think it'll be fine for now. So this number plus this number minus this minus that, that looks fine. Okay, cool. So we'll also do Ignite. So we get one for Tech and one for Ignite. So level one, he'll start with two skills. So Ignite, he's going to have Occasion, Battle Screen. This is also going to be Battle Screen. Physical Attack, this is going to be um, Magical Attack. Or actually, it's not going to cast fire on the enemy. It's going to create a buff. So it's going to be a certain hit. We're going to say casts. We're going to add a state for ignite. Um, this is going to take, I don't know how much MP. We'll just start with 20 and reduce it as needed. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, imb uh, imbue your weapon with the powers of fire. With the power of fire. Fire. And we could actually reference an icon right here and throw um, I I item icon or no we'll just do icon. So we'll click R here and try to find something that looks like fire. Boom. So fire is 64. Hit cancel because I don't want to switch this. So we're going to switch this slash I to 64. So now when you look at this item in the description, it's going to show a flame icon and then say fire. We could even use color codes if we add some plugins. Um, I think I actually need to add uh, Yanfly's message core for that to work. So might actually need to add some plugins because I think it's just some plugins are necessary to make it even even decent. Uh, okay, so that's going to add a state, right? So let's go to state, add state. We're going to add a blank one. We don't even have a change the maximum yet. So let's go to states, change the maximum. We're going to have at least 20 states, probably more than that. We're going to start right here. And we're going to go with this fire one. And we're going to go ignite. Um, so this is going to be not removed at the end of battle, but we're going to turn in. It's going to last five turns. What it's going to do is um, change your element rate. Hey, how about that? You're going to take 50% damage from fire when you're using ignite because you're, you're already using fire. So... Your element rate is, because it's going to be self-cast, so you're going to put this on yourself. You're going to take half damage from fire when you're uh, under the effects of ignite. You're also going to attack with fire when you're under the effects of ignite. Uh, ignite. Uh, you're also going to probably add another state of burning at a percent chance. So 10% chance, maybe more, maybe more, 15, 20% chance, 20% chance. 20% chance to add burning. So let's go here and we'll go ahead and select like uh, maybe we'll switch these icons up. I want to use this for burning and I want to use this one for ignite. Yeah, cool. 
So this is going to be called burning. And burning, uh, we'll make, uh, I can't wait for the plugin for uh, the easy damage over time effects to come out. For now, we're going to use a percent base. We're going to switch it up later, though. I'll change it up. For now, it's going to be a simple um, HP regeneration minus 3% per turn. Um, but we'll just make bosses immune to burning until we change it. So HP regeneration minus 3%. And also, how about this? Your element rate fire is you're going to take 20% more damage from fire while you're already on fire. So adding more fire to you, will you're just going to, if it's burning lands, your next hit is going to do even more damage because they're already burning. So that's how it'll stack up and it'll, I think it'll be good. Um, we are going to make burning, remove it into combat. Also, it's going to end after five turns. So very simple, take away HP and um, deal more damage from fire. We'll change this HP, negative HP regen to uh, probably a note tag with the new plugin when Tigris finishes it. So yeah, so when we attack, we have a 20% chance to inflict burning. This will go on the enemy. They'll take more damage from fire and lose HP uh, per turn. And we're, we'll take half damage from fire and we'll attack with fire. Very simple. We could even have it increase our... Um, physical attack our parameter so we can say attack plus 20 percent so we'll also do just 20 percent more damage with our attacks when we're ignited so pretty powerful buff right lots of things that can make it um, really really useful so your first hits gonna have uh, after ignite is gonna do 20 percent more damage than normal if they catch fire which is one in a five percent chance then they're gonna take 20% uh, more damage on top of that, so it'll stack up, plus they'll take 3% of their life. So it already is stacking up to be a cool looking Mystic Knight. Um, let's go to Ignite and add state Ignite to self cast. So this, hey, I said add state. Okay, scope the user. So this is a sorcery, costs 20 MP, scoped on the user. We need to give it an animation. It's going to add the state to the user, which will do all the stuff we just did. So we added two new states there. We've got an action sequence already for when we have our TP. This is all level one too. So we can go to the class. Level one, he's got branding slash. And level one, he's got ignite. And what we're going to do is level them up to probably 20. I think I'm going to scale them up to 20, giving them maybe 10 to 12 skills, depending, um, for each class. And we'll have eight classes. Uh, that should be plenty. I think that's good. Uh, that's going to be a lot of work. So um, as this project gets more and more work done to it, uh, I'll keep uh, adding to it. And when it gets to a, a released point, or it gets to the point where it's not completely done, but it's almost done, I'll release it. And then um, I'll add to it so you guys can get uh, stay up to date on the newest version of it. But we actually need to do one more thing before we finish this episode. We need to add an animation for uh, Branding Slash and Ignite. So we're going to spend a lot of time. I'll probably do some, a lot of editing to this database off of camera as well. But um, I'll keep you guys up to date with uh, episodes on like some of the changes and stuff. So we're going to add, um, we're going to change these up. We are really going to change these up quite a bit. Um, so yeah, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this hit one and we're going to turn it to the gun one. We're going to take this sound effect, the blow three. We're going to... Raise it to that and go. Actually, I think it would be better if we found a longer one and lowered it like that. So let's go with uh, attack something. Nope, nope, nope. That's probably too loud. Yeah, yeah, way too loud. Sorry about that. Let's actually drop this down. We're almost done with this episode. Open volume mixer. We're going to drop this down just a bit. So next time I open it up, it won't be as loud. I think 20 or 30 should be fine. Okay, cool. Now, let's find a damage attack. This is just going to be like your physical hit. Cool. Let's take that, see what it looks like. That works fine. So our hit physical has been changed. I'm going to make my way down and change probably every one of these a little bit. So... That'll change up the whole game pretty much because you won't see the same ones and hear the same sound effects. There'll be a different pitch. There'll be different color flashing and everything. So let's also take this down a notch, less intensity. Change it up. So what we need to do is find a slashing effect. So let's take this slash physical. Let's take the slash effect. Cool. We'll take this one. 
we're going to go slash because we have one for slash fire so let's just change the hue of this a little bit let's take the slash photon and switch that up to something different like uh, something specific to what we need probably fire right so let's try that let's just see what happens let's see what happens kinda don't like how that does that so let's switch it to a different one let's see what that looks like we also have to change the sound effects I'm gonna switch this to like a slashing nope slashing yep there we go and change this one the flash color a little bit to more of a redder color change the slashing sound effect to that and then change this to a fire sound effect even though we have a slash fire this is gonna be our own slash fire a different one and I'm gonna rename them too. actually rename them um, when I get them to be for so that's going to be probably uh, the the ignite one well, it's more of an attack that's been um, hit, so not ignite, because that's going to be self-cast. Um, this is going to be, we need one for branding slash, so that'll be our branding slash for now. And I'll always change it up later if I don't like it. Branding slash. Everything is work in progress until it's released, so let's change this normal hit physical to branding slash. Now let's make one for Ignite, very quickly. We're gonna go down to the fire one. We're going to, oh my god, I hate it. We're gonna switch this to this one. We're going to change this to... I guess a little bit higher frequency. Change this flashing, add a sound effect here. To something subtle something something subtle no nope, no nope. it's got to be something subtle that'll work um, and then actually more red yes get I'm gonna cut the screen flash completely and I'm gonna cut this last I'm gonna cut this fifth one and add a sound effect here for like a, a explosion type sound effect I like that okay boom I don't like the frame this is on I'm gonna drop this to six yeah and we're gonna change this to ignite I'm getting rid of the default ones so you could always copy paste them into a new project if you want Because the whole point of this is so I don't have to see all the default ones again. So I was thinking, oh, I should add extra room and then just make new ones down here. But no, because I'm afraid they won't even get used then. I'm going to replace most of these with, with new ones. So that you have my own set of animations, which are based on the default ones. But they're completely different. Because I've changed them up on every aspect I can. So, um... That will give us Ignite. Did I change the name? I think I did, right? I used Fire 1 and I called it Ignite. Did I want? Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? I did. Ignite. Very cool. Okay. So now that our characters got that stuff, let's make an enemy super quick. So we want to test this out. We want to see something before. Um, we're not going to use bats. We're not going to... You know what? I'm going to add a Kashyyyk's Battlers. I know this is going long. However, I I want this ep first episode to be a, a good start. So um, we're going to go ahead and add a Kashyyyk's Battlers. Um, I already have them all on my hard drive. Okay. So let's go ahead and go get... Ah! File, save, game, open folder. Um, we're going to keep that open. We're going to take this other project right here. We're going to zoom out. We're going to find where I have Akashic stuff. Very quickly, it's okay. I know where it's at. Uh, Akashic. Uh, okay, cool. She's got so many, so many, so many. 
I should combine them all into one. I do, but then I have some other ones too that I don't want to include because some of that stuff is not actually like free for me to redistribute. It was custom made, so I can't. But I can redistribute Akashics, uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, I might have to ask permission before I distribute it. Um, basically, it's just going to be for the sample project. I'll probably have to ask permission. So I'll do that before I actually uh, add a Kashyyyk battle. Okay, I'm just going to get a hold of Kashyyyk and see if I can include her battlers in a sample project to redistribute. Um, and then if I can, if she lets me, uh, I'll put a Kashyyyk battlers in this. So when you start a, a new project, you don't have to just pick from all of these. I have to ask permission though, guys. Um, so I'm going to ask for her permission. If she gives me permission, I'm going to use her battlers in this project and distribute it as that. Otherwise, I can't, and you have to just deal with what it comes with. What I can do is just make some cool enemies and balance them uh, with the ones we have. So I'll see what I can do. Uh, maybe, I mean, Kashyyyk's always been really cool. Uh, she'll probably be all right with, with some or all of them being distributed in the, in the, the Drifty starter project. Um, okay, so let's start off with uh, something, something simple that's not overly used, I guess. Let's let's do a vampire. This vampire, um, we're actually gonna re rename him to something different. We're gonna call him uh, Bloodsucker. We're gonna give him 500 HP, 100 MP. Um, we're gonna give him. Should we do enemy levels plugin? I feel like we should. Oh God, I feel like we should. Ah, it's gonna. I'm gonna have to add so many plugins if I do. No, oh my god, I'm gonna have to just balance them all one at a time, huh? Fudge. Okay. Anyway, let's just do it like this way. I might add some plugins later. So let's go ahead and say he's got uh, 30 attack. I'm gonna have to do a lot of tweaking on this number, on these numbers, to get this one right. Without enemy levels plugin, it's a lot harder. He's probably kind of quick. He's probably not very lucky. Um, experience, same story here, completely arbitrary until I figure out something. We're also going to make skills for the enemy. For now, we're just going to test out the skills we already made. Um, he's going to, what are, what are vampires weak against garlic, silver? I don't know. We're not going to mess with him too much. This is not going to be the final enemy, guys. This is just adding an enemy so I can test how the skills look in combat. So right now, we're going to add him, uh, auto name that. We're going to start our player party position. Uh, right, right, uh, uh mm, doesn't matter, right here, it's already party position right there. We're going to create a new event right here. This is going to be a simple event just to test something. We're going to delete it right after. Um, so, oh yeah, he's going to be locked in a treasure chest because that's what happens. Um, battle processing. Uh, bloodsucker can't escape, can lose. Yes, okay. If when nothing happens, if we're going to delete that event. But we need to go to the system, right? And we need to, oh, Carl's already in the party. I'm going to hit delete right here on this empty space, a little trick, because sometimes it starts you with empty spaces. So you'll start with actor 2, 3, 4, 5 in the party, or, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the party, but you don't have anything here. So you have three invisible actors there, and it just doesn't work right. So usually it fixes it, but sometimes it doesn't. So you have to click on this space and hit delete three times to get rid of the empty space. We're going to use side view battle. We are not going to start transparent. Um, we're going to keep that the same. Uh, we don't have any music for that right now, which is fine. Uh, we're not going to draw the game title because I'm going to do something different for that. And we are going to change this to something. I'm going to make a custom one. In the next episode, we're going to continue working on this. And it's going to be much different and much cooler than this. So let's test out really quickly. And guess what? I'm going to delete theme 6. <laughs> Deal with it. We're going to have a different font, that's for sure. So here's our guy, Carl the Mystic Knight. He's got a couple skills. Ignite and Branding Slash. I didn't give him any weapon though, so that could be a problem. So let's do that real quick. We'll have to make a sword from him. So much stuff to do. So much stuff to do. Let's make a sword for our Mystic Knight. I think there's some cool looking swords down here. Let's give him this this sword. And this is going to be Mystic Blade for now. And it's going to be starting 
weapon for the Mystic Knight. I'm going to have to change a lot of these naming things. We're going to call it a sword. We're going to give it a basic animation of um, slash physical. We're, we will change that. Trust me. We're going to change that. We're going to just say it has 10 attack for right now. And oh, we also need to start him with the sword. Actor. Carl. Starting weapon. He should be able to use the swords. Cool. Level 1. He's probably going to die. Probably going to die. Lots of balancing. I just want to look how these skills... I just want to see how these skills look. We're going to remove that plug-in next, too. We don't need that plug-in. Okay. Okay. How does this look? Bloodsucker emerged. Sorcery. Ignite. Cast Ignite. We need to lower it. Okay. Now we're going to just regular attack him. And we're, we're regenerating. And pretty soon, we might add a state to him, but we don't know if we will because... Uh, I mean, I know it will, but I don't know if it'll show it without the plugins. We're going to add some plug. We have to add a few plugins. It'll probably be 10 or so. Um, let's get, see if we can get 100 TP without dying. One short, aren't we? Yeah, one short. So we can balance the enemy. Oh, I know what we could do, actually. Is increase the strength uh, on the weapon a little bit. We'll give it 15 attack. And uh, maybe reduce the enemy's attack a little bit. He seems like he's hitting too hard. Uh, what am I doing? Enemies. Okay. 25 attack. He was he was hitting too hard. Um, so let's go ahead and... Let's make him fast. But not super hard hitting. Yeah. And we'll give him a lifesteal attack too. To make him a little more of a pain in the ass. Uh, and maybe give some way for you to stop him from life stealing. Uh, fight, sorcery, ignite. Start off the combat with ignite. We're gonna reduce. We're gonna change that animation so that it's lower. I'll show you how to do that real quick before we finish it. I want to. I want to see branding slash real quick. I could have just said it. Oh, oh, it does show it. Look, he is. He's burning. See, he's taking damage. And our attacks will deal more damage now because of yeah, 132 because he's burning and we're dealing more damage when they're on fire. Bam. Let's get to 100. Maybe we'll kill him. I think we'll end up killing him. Yeah, that's going to happen. Carl's level 2. But we. Sh oh, I didn't preserve TP. That's another thing I like to do in the game. Um, so let's do that. Actor, preserve TP. Uh, on all classes, I'm going to give him the special thing to um, special flag, preserve TP. It's just something I like to have. You can take it out if you don't like it. Um. Because we got up to 80 and then we start at 10 again. No, we get up to 80, we start the next one. Like, we, we psyched ourselves up, we're ready for the next battle. And we can at attack a couple times and then, you know, Branding Slash. So just to test out the animation on Branding Slash, I'm going to get rid of the TP cost for now. It'll come back. Um, also, the animation on Ignite wasn't quite right. Let's drop it. Let's drop it down wherever it was. Ignite. So it's already on position feet. So I'm going to have to do a batch and do a, a Y. And we're going to make the Y negative 50 on all frames. Okay, let's see how that affects it. I think it's coming along good so far. A good start. Good start. Fight, sorcery, ignite. Boom. Yeah, see how perfect that was? Awesome. And then uh, attack. Oh, we'll have to kill him first, won't we? Oh, no, no, no. We don't need 100 TP. What am I thinking? Fight. Uh, tech. Branding Slash. How does this look? Oh, we don't have Yanfly's action sequence. Uh, we're going to have to add that stuff. So the last thing we're going to do, last thing we're going to do, is we're going to add some plugins. Why does this show up over here? I don't know. Um, okay. Well, we have to do that manually. So let's do that real quick. Um, Drifty Starter Project, cool, we'll keep that open, and then what we'll do is take this folder, we'll go to MV, we'll go to Legend of Driftwood, where I keep them all updated, and we'll go to, nope, not IMG, JS, plugins, and we're going to take some Yanfly stuff. We're going to use the Yanfly Core Engine, so Yanfly Core Engine, we're going to use the, probably the Damage Core, um, oh, the Element Core is so good, 
Um, we'll use some of his core stuff, huh? Because it's so powerful. Oh, God. You can remove them. Um, let's see. Item core is good. Uh, I'm going to try not to add a lot of stuff, but for vampires and stuff, lifesteal would be super great. I have to do message core to make things look good. Um, party system, I, I can, I'm can. i going to try to keep it minimal. Trust me, I'm going to try to do as minimal as possible. There's hundreds that I use, and I know that uh, I can get, I can drop a lot of them. Uh, but some of them are so good. Um, weapon Unleashed was such a good plugin. We're going to definitely need that. Weapon Animation, probably want to do that. Fudge, so many. Aftermath could be optional. Um, action Sequence Pack, we need those. Uh, we need the core engine. We need the battle engine core. We can get we can get away with not using most of these. So and we're not. We're gonna keep it minimal. Um, let's see. Nope, we don't need any. Oh, visual HP gauge. Yeah, that's an expansion though for uh, for the the battle engine core. So we're gonna get HP bars. Who doesn't like HP bars, right? Um, Button common events must have. Um, we're gonna do buff states core. We have to have that. Uh, nope, AI core. We're not gonna do that. Some sometimes it just shows up as a virus. It's not a virus. Battle engine core. That's the one we wanted. Battle status window is great. It's so good. Um, oh my god, that's more than I wanted to have. So much more already. Um, we're just gonna throw a few in there. Okay, that's it. Let's see how many we got now. What do we have? Copy the 16 items. Oh, God. JS plugins. Uh, you know what? I don't want any of these. Nope. None of them. Bye bye. Okay, paste. 16 plugins. Oh, gosh. Maybe we can get away with a dozen or something. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these plugins real quick. I don't know why it goes to the screen. Last thing we'll do. We're going to do a uh, core engine. Bam. Got it. Get it. Got it. Good. Uh, what the fu- oh, it goes to this other screen. I don't know why it's doing that. Weird bug. Um, underneath that, uh, it's pretty sure we're going to need message core. I don't remember the exact order, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, then we're going to need, let's see if I get this right. <laughs> uh, message core, we got that. Weapon animation, weapon unleash. All of these are going to be after the bat, uh, yeah, all of this is battle engine core now. So battle engine core. We could even get a separator. Um, after battle engine core, we want action sequence pack. One. Two. Three. Trust me, guys, I'm going to narrow it down to as minimal as possible, but some of these plugins. Also, oh, I need Yanfly's permission, don't I, to distribute a, a project with... He'll, he'll be cool with it. He'll be cool with it. I'm going to ask him anyway. Uh, to distribute a, a project with his plugins. I've, everybody does that. I don't think he's going to care. Uh, I'll ask him anyway. Um, visual HP gauge is going to come after that. Probably Yenfly engine core. Battle status window. That will come somewhere in here. I'll check my other project as a reference off camera to line these up if these aren't exactly right. Uh, damage core comes in here somewhere. Weapon animation comes at this somewhere in here. Visual HP gauge. I think this comes before these other ones. I think this comes like right here. Not not positive, but I'm guessing it's somewhere up there. I know a lot of these will are forgiving, but some of them are not. Um, so then we have, what is it, uh, item core? I think item core comes up next. So we already got the damage core in there. Um, buff states core comes before that. And then item core, and then skill core. Oh no, lifesteal. Lifesteal comes somewhere in here. We might get rid of lifesteal because I think we could make it uh, if I'm eliminating plugins, that would be the first one to go, I think. Uh, what comes first? Skill core or item core? I don't know. Item core, we'll, we'll try that first. And then we'll do skill core. So we got one, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Two plugins that I haven't added. Button Common Events comes in here somewhere towards the bottom. And did I get the Element Core? I kind of want that one too, son of a gun. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So one of these is missing visual visual HP bar. Is that it? Nope, got it. At the actually is Weapon Unleash plugin. Did I add that one? I didn't add that one out. Weapon Unleash is the last one. Okay. Boom. This actually goes up higher. Weapon Unleash, I'm pretty sure it comes like right here somewhere. I'll double check all that. That's good for now. You can see the plugins we're going to be using in this project. Might get rid of a couple of them probably keep those but it's going to be very minimal if I'm allowed to include plugins if I'm allowed to include Akashic's battlers I will put her battlers in here as well um, I'm not sure if you have to be a patreon backer to get the battlers if so then I won't be able to do that if they're freely distributed which I think they are I'll, I'll be able to I don't know I have to ask let me get some permissions guys I'm gonna to try to make this project as big and as well sorry not actually I'm gonna to try to make this project as uh, helpful and useful as possible without bloating it I don't want it to be bloated that's why we're gonna do with minimal plugins um, but we are going to add um, 10 actors possibly uh, well let's start with eight and then work our way up eight actors eight classes probably like uh, maybe a hundred skills if you count the ones right here probably like 50 items maybe less than that actually uh, you know like 40 weapons and like you know 50 to 100 armors we're gonna start with 20 enemies and work our way up see how many we actually get to we're probably gonna have a lot of states to be honest um, most of these will be changed and customized and they'll be renamed and everything will be different on the animations I'm going to try to find a tile set to add so that's gonna be a big thing that I hope I can get uh, a couple of custom tile sets without infringing on copyrights so whatever I can find that's free to uh, use in commercial and uh, whatever project I'm gonna I'm gonna try to put these and use and set them up for you so hopefully there'll be a lot of stuff in this sample project for you to use I'm gonna use uh, free uh, music to change up these musics uh, all of the the music effects I have some custom sound effects that I've been recording in Audacity. Uh, I could uh, sneak those in there too. And yeah, we'll have some skill types, probably different skill types for each, each class. Uh, there'll be some other sample maps. Okay, anyway, this went on long enough. You guys get the point, right? This is what I'm trying to do, make a starter project. So when you start a new game, you could load this one up and just start changing and taking stuff out and putting your own stuff in and make your own games based on the sample project. It'll be a long time before it's out, guys, but I'm going to keep working on it, and this will be something that will be distributed so that I can get better games sent to me, and I don't have to look at Spark. I swear to God, if I have to look at Spark animation one more time, I'm going to just get sick. I'm going to throw up all over this mic. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy this sort of content, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more RPG Maker and video tutorials and Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials. I do first impression videos and your games if you want me to do that. However, if your game is not ready, if you're using first person battle system, if you're using default font, please consider before sending me your game or it will be roasted into the fires, the fiery chasms of hell. But just know that I do it out of respect and I want everyone to get better and promote positivity. Okay, that's it for this. That's it, guys. Bye. I love you guys. Bye-bye. See you next time.